But, um, no, having a good time today, just a relaxing day today, and uh, back into work tomorrow. Tuned feeder dipoles allow operation on multiple bands at quite high efficiency, but they do require a special antenna coupler. In this video, I'll talk about an antenna coupler that I built from VU2ESE's website. VU2ESE used this approach because he didn't have roller inductors. In this case, you would have needed a pair because as you can see, there's two lots of inductors, one for each of the L networks that's used in this design. You could potentially have a tap coil and a switch, but you're limited to the number of taps on the switch. You can get a much bigger range of inductance by having the coils in series and then switches to short out the unwanted ones. Selection of inductance is like a binary series. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 1.6 and 3.2. This allows a wide range of inductances to be selected, all the way from 0 to 6.2 microhenries, with the resolution being 0.2 microhenry. The antenna socket for the transceiver, the one-to-one -one ballon, the switch which switches the ballon out, that's used if you're using an in-fed wire or other antenna that does not require a balanced antenna coupler, the five switches that switch the inductance, the variable capacitor, the output connections, there's two of them for the balanced antenna. If you're using it in unbalanced mode, there's the option of a coax connection, or if you're using an infrared wire, the wire goes onto one of the connections and the earth or counterpoise goes onto this one here. It's a pretty warm day here today, Plato. It's uh, 29.3 degrees here at the moment. The AX5 PAS, also portable. Go ahead, Plato. Thank you. Thank you. A tuned feeder dipole like this can be used in all circumstances where you'd otherwise use a link dipole. The main benefit is to change bands you don't need to leave the operating position or lower the wire. All band changing can be done in the antenna coupler right beside the transceiver. After a few contacts the noise came up. It turned out to be our friend the LED lighting in the railing. The new location certainly making a difference, with even mobile stations being heard on 15 and 20 metres. Being able to hear mobile portables and QRPs is a surefire indication that you've got a good receiving location with not too much noise. If you don't hear those stations, maybe time to go somewhere else. Three Yankee Echo Portable, was it? VK3, Joe? Five and six, 56 according to me. Your 500 milliwatts are all working quite well. Uh, with a bit of QSB. Not uh, what it was last weekend, but um, 
that would be uh, part of the weather conditions and uh, the uh, state of the ionosphere, no doubt.